So I've had a ton of questions asked um, how to build a boulder wall like this. I've been meaning to make this video for like six months, so today is the day. In this video, I'm gonna go over a quick breakdown of how we bid a job like this, how we plan to attack it, how do we get it done, and roughly how much profit is on a job like this. There's a lot of variables as usual, so I'll break it down the best I can. Um, and all these are gonna be rough preliminary numbers. None of this is exact. It's all really close within you know 10 to 20%, depending on what it may be. This wall happens to be at my own personal crib. It's just a good, good general project. Project. I mean, it's just about a thirty thousand dollar job. So we'll start with these steps. Uh, these are cut fieldstone steps. I don't remember exactly, but I think we pay around one fifty for these, uh, roughly. They're really nice. We start with some wide ones on the bottom. We kind of got it down here and curved so that you can kind of go up, go over here towards the garage. You can come out here towards the fish house. The wind was blowing like fifty miles an hour, and it actually like blew over and hit the quad right up over here. But then you can see a fifty mile an hour winds. This rock held really good. Another rock blew away, so that's a good thing. With boulders are heavy; they don't move. Here, so steps roughly one hundred fifty a pop. I don't know how many are here. One. This right here for two really good guys with an excavator. That's going to be roughly a day's worth of work, about a ten hour day. Impacting about eight, to six, eight inches of base under each one, and then setting them with the excavator, leveling them, and not getting them put in. They're really nice. They blend in so well, and they're really easy to comfortable to walk up this wall is roughly is 75 feet long you can see how flat and nice that top is this job we would bid at a like a per square foot price so if we're 75 by average we always just pick an average everything with bowlers average nothing is exact so we'd measure this job 75 feet by average right over here it's about six over here it's about seven over there it's about five so overall you're averaging roughly six feet 75 by six whatever square footage that would come out you'd add up all your square footage and then you would add in your steps and one thing to note these returns are here like to make a 90 degree corner like this takes a little bit of time doesn't look like it but you got to find the right rock you got to stack them so the tops are flat so you have kind of a nice corner you don't, you don't want, want this corner sticking out or anything you see how this is nice and flat and it kind of comes in so if someone can run right downstairs you don't want these sticking out you want to make sure you can keep your batter here so someone doesn't come right down and hit their elbow on these and see how this corner here is kind of laid back at an angle because you don't want this sticking up or out you just run into issues people are rubbing it on it see how this is perfectly laid back it's all nice and tight this takes time it takes time and a lot of a lot of experience to be able to build something like this to look good and to last forever. Basically, this is four days worth of work. I know guys in the area that would spend three weeks on this, but if you're good, you got lots of experience, you can make this happen in about four full days. So I would plan to start the job on like a Monday and wrap it up by Thursday. And uh, yeah, that's about it for out here. Another thing to mention is water is the every retaining wall's worst enemy. So we got some edging basic plants up here. We built this up to where we have a swale in here. So all this water coming from over here runs down and it runs right through here and around. We don't want any water running into this wall. This isn't a waterfall, this is a boulder wall. So we want to always divert the water away from the wall if you can. The height might look a little bit high, but we want to get this up to a height where the water isn't running back into it. All the grades running, all the grades running away. So just a few little tips. Jump inside and uh, I'll go over the pricing like this and the profit on a job like this. So here is what it looked like before we started the project. It's always fun, kind of fun just to look back and see the difference. So I have it all broke down in numbers here. I never had an official quote since it's at my house, otherwise I would show you that. So we would bid this job at about 30000 and here's the breakdown of kind of our cost. So it's all going to vary. It depends on how much, your, how much your equipment is costing you, how much your labor is costing you, how much your rock is costing you. There's so many variables around here. We pay sixteen to 1700 per load of boulders, which you'll see here in a second. So our cost um, with the... Here's like a rough breakdown of the cost of the project being thirty thousand. We have roughly seven thousand in labor and overhead, roughly five thousand in boulders, roughly two thousand in steps, and roughly two thousand in base material and fabric. You always use more fabric than you think. It always gets scrunched. Here's a little pro tip: so you have a seventy-five foot wall by six. Um, you're not going to be able to do that with a hundred by six foot piece of uh, roll of fabric. It's going to take you probably two of those by the time you get it all in there said and done so just trust me on that one you'll see what i mean when you go do your first wall it's kind of funny in this video right here this video is a year old and i'm wearing the same hat and sweatshirt a year ago <laughs> uh, what do you do anyway so that's kind of a breakdown um which com that comes out to roughly 35 to 40 percent profit margin and there is quite a bit of variable there if this job would have taken another two days um then that, you know that would have been another two whole days of overhead and labor so that could, that could cuts down that that can get cut down to 15 10 15 percent 20 percent pretty quick so in order to really do these jobs profitably um you have to 
do them efficiently. Otherwise, they can go south pretty quick. I also forgot to mention a little bit of tear out. Normally, tear out cost is a lot more if we get to pull out timbers to redo this. But since that these were rock, we were able to use majority of the bigger rock. We had to haul away some of the smaller rock. But the tear out on this uh, job like this is a lot less than if it were timbers or something we had to pay at the landfill to dispose of. So if we had to remove this was all timbers, to, you know, the same size that we built this with boulders, it would have been another probably roughly off the top of my head, six, eight grand on top of that. So I don't know where we're at. I'm in central Minnesota. I really don't. It's kind of hard to tell. I mean, we have a pretty good market here for work. Um, you definitely got to work for it. And not every job falls in your lap. Um, it takes a, a good reputation and a good website and a good salesperson to get work like this. But there seems to be plenty of it around. So that's kind of what it's going for in our area. And like I said, there's just so many variables on what you're paying labor and boulders and everything. Because if you're paying twice as much for rock, you know, your material loan would be more. So you're going to get way more for this job. So anyway, in central Minnesota, where we're at here, where it snows all the time and sometimes it feels like the North Pole. And the next day it feels like Florida. The weather's all over the place. Um, that's kind of what a job like this is going for. And something like this. The value is there. Um, you can build a big structure like this, and people can enjoy it for 20, 30, 40, 50 years to come. So there's a lot of value in what we're doing with boulders, building something like this. So enjoy a little time lapse here, but that's pretty much all I got for you guys today in this video. I probably missed a thing or two. I'm by no means perfect. I do my best, but I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope this helps you out when you're bidding a job. Another thing to mention is you can see how the excavator here is sitting on this concrete. I am going. I was going to replace this concrete. It's still am at some point, so I was able to drive all over it, drop rock on it, whatnot. Where if that wasn't a good concrete apron, or if it was a good concrete apron, then I would have had to build this from behind, which would have taken a lot longer. Because you can see right now the excavator is on concrete, so you see it's washing off here in a second. So being able to drive on that made every made our, our job a lot easier. Um, not having to be careful around it and not being able to drive on it, so it's got a little scarred up and cracked and here and there, but don't matter. So I'm going to replace it here probably in the spring one more quick thing so we have we have a contract that we used for jobs like this that we've spent a ton of time developing and having lawyers look at and improve and we've been adding to it over the years so if you'd be interested in seeing what our contract looks like for a job like this uh, let me know and uh, we could I think we've had so many people requesting them that I think we may put them up for sale it'll be a reasonable price there's a lot of value in it so if that's something you'd be interested in, let me know and I can connect you with that. Video helps you guys out. Thanks so much for watching. And remember, in order to get results no one else is getting, you got to do things no one else is doing.